In this video, we will be looking at how to employ CCRP INS bombing in the Mirage 2000C by using an initial point fix. We will go over how INS drift creates errors in inertial navigation and how to combat it, the concept of the initial point and PI fix, barred waypoint offsets using the metric or XZ coordinate system, the parameters of the lower level toss bombing strike profile, and some useful tips when performing this type of strike during ingress and egress. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the vicious and versatile Mirage 2000C and today we are expanding our knowledge of our strike options by looking at INS bombing, linking this with our understanding of CCRP bombing. It's a cold overcast day in the Levant and we have a mission to take out a foreign-backed chemical weapons factory masquerading as a fertilizer plant in central Syria. We have already familiarized ourselves with the two main methods of bomb delivery in the Mirage 2000C, CCRP and CCIP. But today's sortie calls for us to use a supplementary method in order to render the mission a success. And this is where INS bombing comes into play. This is a much more in-depth form of strike action that requires a little more forward planning than the methods we have previously used up until now. The best times to employ it are when designating a target by eye would be difficult, for example in poor visibility or if it is well defended, and especially if your flight into the AO is long, more on why in just a bit. It also affords us the opportunity to perform one of my favourite attack profiles, the low level bomb toss. In the mission, we will take off from Incherlik Air Force Base here in Turkey. We will fly south and skirt the coast before turning east over Lebanon close to the ancient city of Tyre and towards the border with Syria. We will strike the target and then egress west before landing at RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus. The strike will require some careful planning. Our target is located here close to the town of al Gizlanaya, We will be approaching from the west. A precision strike is required to avoid collateral damage, but we do not have any guided weapons available. The target is well defended by a picket line of SA-8 Osas located at nearby air facilities and an SA-6 Cub located at Damascus Airport. The target factory itself is defended by an SA-9 Strela. We will return to our mission briefing shortly. Feel free to skip the next section if you are familiar with INS bombing. However, its method of employment in the Mirage 2000C is somewhat different compared with other airframes. So first, a short recommended presentation on some important concepts. In this briefing, we are looking at the application of CCRP INS bombing in the Mirage 2000C and how INS drift must be considered during this type of strike. We are already familiar with the concept of an inertial navigation system, or INS. Coordinates for waypoints, called BUTs in the Mirage 2000C, are programmed into an INS computer. Using gyroscopes and accelerometers, Indicators in the cockpit can then guide the aircraft to those waypoints, allowing for easy navigation. Although not essential, waypoints can be programmed at specific, easily recognizable from the air locations, the example here being a cathedral and an airfield. They can also be programmed at specific targets. When we performed CCRP bombing in the Mirage 2000C, we designated the target by eye, using symbology on the hood. This information was then passed to our SNA weapons and navigation computer to inform us when and where to drop our bombs. It stands to reason that we could pass the specific location of a target in the form of a waypoint to the SNA for the same purpose. In many combat aircraft, data from the INS can be fed directly into a weapon system or targeting computer which in turn can inform weapons of where the target is 
and when and how the pilot should release their bombs to score a hit. This has advantages over designation by eye, as it removes an element of pilot error when under pressure from ground threats. In some modern strike aircraft with smart weapons, this is simply the case. However, due to the time from which it is modelled, the Mirage 2000C suffers from noticeable INS drift after flying long distances, which means simply pinpointing the target's location in this manner is inefficient. Consider this situation here. Waypoints have been precisely programmed and our target is located exactly at Waypoint 3. We could fly to Waypoint 3, tell our weapon system the target is there, drop our bombs and score a precise hit. However, due to minute inaccuracies in the Mirage 2000C's INS gyros and accelerometers, compound errors build up the longer the aircraft flies. You can see here that as we have approached Waypoint 1, the Waypoint positions no longer align perfectly with the true locations. Over time, these errors build up. Therefore, by the time we reach our target, it is entirely possible for the waypoint to be nowhere near the actual target itself. If we were to now simply tell our weapon systems the target is at waypoint 3, our bomb drop would be entirely useless. The Mirage 2000C combats this INS drift by using an initial point. A waypoint, in this case waypoint 3, is located over an easily recognizable geographic or human feature on the landscape that is relatively close to the target but in a safe area. Here we are using a television mast. The location of the actual target is programmed as a waypoint offset, known as a BARD in the Mirage 2000C. This is a vector measure of change to the target measured from the waypoint. As we fly the long distance along our flight plan, INS drift will still happen. However, when we approach the initial point waypoint, we execute a fix on its location using the recognizable feature to tell the INS that the coordinates stored in this waypoint are actually located here. This not only corrects the INS drift, but also automatically tells the SNA weapon system that the target is located at the offset. As the initial point is close to the target, little further INS drift will occur and the bombs can be dropped with relative accuracy on the target. This may all sound complicated, but in short you will need to know the location of a recognizable terrain feature, identifiable from the air, that is close to the target, say within a few minutes flight time. Secondly, you will need to know in advance the exact displacement from the feature to the target. Whilst a number of high-level attack profiles exist, this form of CCRP INS bombing excels in the low-level bomb toss role, as it is easy to perform the initial point fix at low level. This profile is also great for avoiding longer range SAMs by keeping below their minimum altitude. The profile begins approximately 500 feet above the ground, with the initial point waypoint and target offset already programmed. The Mirage is flown towards the waypoint corresponding to the initial point and a fix is executed. This then automatically presents CCRP cues on the hood, which the pilot uses to steer towards the target. At the appropriate point, a 5 to 6 G pull is executed and the trigger held. The bombs are released at the CCRP and are lofted in a parabolic arc similar to artillery fire, the so-called TOSS. Evasive maneuvers are then executed to escape the danger zone. Thank you for listening. Now let's see how CCRP INS bombing can be employed to our current mission objective and how it is conducted in our beloved Mirage 2000C. For our initial point in this mission, we will be using this television tower to the west of the AO. Conceivably, any object or terrain feature can be used, but the tower is ideal as it will be easy to spot from the air. OK, 
Okay, we have just taken off from Incherlik and are heading due south. We may as well get our weapons set up now. Today we are using the good old Samp 250 low drag bombs. We have eight of them, which will be dropped with a separation of 60 meters, and we will use the tail fuses today. Prior to takeoff, we have programmed our mission waypoints, and waypoint 2 corresponds to our initial point, the television tower. This was done using our standard degrees and decimal minutes coordinate system. However, we also need to calculate the offset, and to do this with the greatest precision, we also need its location in metric coordinates, or the so-called XZ coordinates. If your initial point is a map object, as we have here, you can simply select it. Otherwise, you will need to zoom in and place the cursor over it. And then we'll change over to the metric coordinates, like so, and note its location down. We then need the position of the target in metric coordinates. So let's zoom right into it. We'll just target right in the middle there and note down its metric coordinates for its location. We can then calculate the offset by subtracting the initial point's metric coordinates from the target's metric coordinates, as shown here. These figures are literally quoted in meters, and the latitude longitude waypoint offset works in kilometers. So we can input these figures into our INS on the PCN panel to help us mark the target. We also need the difference in altitude between the initial point and the target, measured in either feet or meters. Now, the offset could be found using the polar coordinate method that we used in a previous tutorial. By finding the bearing and range using the ruler tool, and inputting these into the PCN under the rho theta parameters. However, this is far less accurate as the bearing on the ruler tool is rounded to the nearest degree, which just doesn't have the level of precision required for this sort of navigation and targeting. Let's program our offset into the INS on the PCN panel. Make sure we have the waypoint associated with the initial point, in this case waypoint 2, selected as our prep waypoint. We already have the exact positional coordinates of the initial point fix object, in this case the television tower, programmed into the waypoint, its latitude, longitude and altitude in our standard units. We'll now input the offset in kilometers using the delta L, delta G parameter on the offset or barred side of the parameter switch. The left parameter is the difference in latitude, which is north by 5,909 meters or 5.909 kilometers. So we'll type that in north 5909 and insert. Note the decimal point quoting the figure in kilometers. The right parameter is obviously the difference in longitude, which is east by 54,685 meters, or 54.685 kilometers. The altitude difference, delta alt, is minus 2467 feet. The target is lower than the initial point. Now there's no reason why we couldn't have done all the waypoint and offset programming on the ground before takeoff, but likewise nor is there any reason why you can't do it in the air. So if you are working with a controller, you could coordinate a strike en route. The long flight time for this mission means that we will very likely experience some INS drift, so we'll definitely need to execute that fix.
Okay, we're quite a distance out, but we are coming up on waypoint one and are going to descend to approximately 1,000 feet. As we approach waypoint one, we'll switch over to waypoint two, which will steer us towards the initial point and put us on a rough heading towards the target. Now that we are approaching the initial point waypoint, we are going to let the Mirage know this is the case by selecting PI, Point Initial, on the PCA panel. An additional form of ranging appears on the PCA, ZBI, or Barometric Altimeter Ranging. This works in a similar way to how Radio Sonde, or RS Radar Altimeter Ranging works, but uses the barometric measurement instead of the radar measurement. As usual, it is normal to have two modes selected, with either RS or ZBI acting as a backup to TAS. We will test our initial point symbology by pressing Weapon System Command forward to enter Air to Ground Selected Mode. The diamond we can see is the initial point fix reticle. We will place this over our IP landmark when we see it. In the meantime, Weapon System Command aft will return us to memorized mode. We are skirting over the friendly Lebanese countryside at the minute, and we are going to remain beneath the mountain ridge, which marks the border with Syria we can see in the distance, to prevent detection. Now, something to consider when planning your strikes. Just because our initial point fix feature, in this case the television tower, is easy to see, we still need to consider other things such as the weather. I have deliberately programmed this mission so that the weather seems fine down low, but as we pass over the mountain ridge near Mount Hermon as we cross the border, the visibility becomes diminished. We should still be able to identify it, but don't forget you couldn't see the Burj Khalifa in a two-yard visibility pea soup, so do consider this accordingly. Six nautical miles to go, and we're just about to pass over the top of the mountain ridge. It should be coming into view just about now. There it is. Weapon system can forward to switch back to our fix reticle. We are going to steer to place the diamond fix reticle over the feature. We are then going to press the magic slave air to ground designate button on the HOTAS to mark the fix. Please note that you must fix the feature and you must fix the base of the feature and not the waypoint crosshair. You can see the waypoint has suffered INS drift as the feature and crosshair no longer coincide. So, ready with the Magic Slave Air to Ground Designate button on the HOTAS. And fix. After the fix, steering cues will appear next to the flight path marker. These will now guide us towards the target, so we will steer the aircraft in such a way to align our flight path marker with the cues. The designation Diamond will disappear automatically as we overfly and fly away from the initial point. We are now being guided towards the target by the steering cues. We are going to keep low, preferably less than 500 feet AGL, all the way to the CCRP. We will use these hills to mask our approach, 
and hopefully fool the Sams. We are skirting across these plains and using our radar altimeter to monitor our height above ground. I've also turned my radar to silent to try and make myself less visible. So all we need to do now is follow the steering cues next to the flight path marker and keep an eye out for our CCRP release cue. We are just about 30 kilometers away from the target as shown here on the hood. This is the slant range to the calculated impact point. The terrain masking has done well. We are well within the range of the Cubs and Osas, but we haven't detected their radar signals, so they haven't spotted us yet. But just in case, we'll set to an appropriate countermeasure program for mixed air to ground, as we have that Strela to think about also. That beep was our first RWR signal. And it's now tracking us, so we'll jam its signal. 10 kilometers, about 6 miles to go. The CCRP release queue has appeared, so it is now time to pull up. We'll execute a pull, maintaining alignment with the steering cues as best we can, whilst holding down the second stage of the microbe trigger. The bombs will be released at the correct time when the queue passes over the flight path marker and will be lofted towards the target. In the meantime, we'll be getting the chuff out of there. Pickle evasion, and prophylactic chaff and flare for good measure. We'll dive down again to try and mask from the suns, and turn 270 degrees for egress. Miller time, one times chemical weapons plant damaged. Let's get out of there. We no longer need our offset steering cues, so we'll press Weapons System Command aft to remove them, and we can deselect our weapons. Now let's get back to Akrotiri. It's barbecue beef for dinner. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. If I'm honest, we've really only scratched the surface there with the abilities of CCRP INS bombing in the Mirage 2000C. Why not plan some of your own missions and see if you can avoid the SAMs? With continued thanks to my patrons, especially Yan11 and Lakota21, and introducing our latest supporter, Stanley Cooperstein. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment, and share. But until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. This is Reva saying, last call.